Before I get started with this video, I want to wish all of you a very happy new year, and I hope that your 2019 is off to a great start. With that being said, over the holidays, I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how to get the televideo stream into a mobile device for iOS or Android. Now, I was not successful doing that, but I did stumble across this DJI repository that shows how to get Tello video streamed to your desktop, and that's what I'm going to cover today. And I do warn you, this is rather involved and technical, and if you do end up having any questions, feel free to post a comment below, and I'll do my best to respond. Now, I've actually forked the original repository, the DJI SDK Tello Python, and now this is my own repository. I'm going to be making some changes and some updates, so I'll put a link to this repository below. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this into my GitHub desktop and save it locally. And if you're not a GitHub desktop user, you can clone from the command line or certainly download a zip file. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you this folder. There are three main projects in here. There's a single Tello test. We're not worried about that. We're going to dive into the Tello video. And I do want to mention that this tutorial is both applicable to the standard Tello, which is exciting, as well as Tello EDU. And I'll demonstrate the video feed from both of these drones later in the video. So the main thing we're going to focus on in this video is Tello video. There is also one with pose recognition. I haven't spent much time with that yet, but what it will allow you to do is use gestures to control Tello, which is incredibly awesome. Now let's go ahead and look at the Tello video structure. There are only a few main files. Your main.py, this is what we'll be running. Uh, this is a Tello control UI. There's actually an interface that allows us to control Tello and then the other class that helps us get the video. Now what's most important is this install directory and depending on your operating system, in my case I'm running a Mac, but this also will work on Linux and Windows. So for this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to set this up for Mac. I'll do this from the command line. You can see that I have a terminal window open and I'm going to CD into the install directory as well as the Mac directory. Now one thing we'll need to do is we'll just need to change this uh, install file so that it's executable. I'll go ahead and do that. And before I run it, let's take a quick look at the format of this file. So it's pretty straightforward. It'll give you some feedback. For Mac it uses brew to install some dependencies and then some additional Python libraries to make this work. And the most important thing is there will be a H.264 decoder. And this decoder is actually a GitHub project that was published, looks like a couple years ago, and it's a H.264 decoder for Raspberry Pi. It's able to grab that video stream and display it. You can see that it's C++, and as part of the install, that will get built and made. And then the Python program will use this to stream the video. Now this installation script will take some time to run. So I'm going to put a time command in front of it just so that we can see how long that it's going to take. I'll run it and it will ask a few questions and during the process it might ask you for your administrator password so that it can make changes to the file system. But with that being said, we'll let this run and check back in shortly. The build and installation is complete says built target H.264 decoder, took about three minutes. I'll go back to my televideo folder. You can see here that the file exists and that's pretty much it for doing the build and we're ready to run the Python script. Now we'll go ahead and power up Tello and I'll wait for the Wi-Fi network to show up and that's important because obviously we need a connection between our desktop running the Python code and Tello. I'll select Tello and then I'll go ahead and run Python and we'll run the main script and let's take a look at what happens. So now you can see that we're getting the video feed from Tello. See my desk is cluttered here but there's feedback in the terminal window and then I'll go ahead to the main UI 
see the desktop. And there's also all sorts of commands that we can issue. There's a command panel, which I'm not going to dive into right now, but it's basically a nice little UI to send control commands to Tello. Go ahead and close that. And we also can take a still shot. I'll center the Mavic Pro and I'll click snapshot. And I'll click it again. And what we can see in the terminal window is that it says the file was saved. I'll go back to my finder. And then within the image directory, you can see the two photos that I took. So lots of capabilities with this. Now let me go ahead and do the same with Tello EDU. I have Tello EDU powered up. I'll go to my network and look for that. We can see it here. So let me go ahead and connect. So now we're connected. And once again, we'll go ahead and issue the Python main.py command. See that it's getting the stream. And once again, now we have the stream from Tello, in this case, Tello EDU. And I can issue the same commands through the command panel, or let's take a photo of the Inspire 1. And we'll take a photo of the Mavic. Then I'll go over to my folder, and you can see that we now have the photos that we took with Tello EDU. Now, one last thing I'll leave you guys with is there is a bug. This will lock up if you try to uh, close out of the application. Basically, we'll, it'll hang, and then you have to force quit. But we can certainly work through that. I'll probably push a fix to that just so we can have a clean app that closes successfully. That was an overview of getting the live video stream from Tello and Tello EDU with Python. I plan on doing some more digging and doing some image recognition stuff in the near future. So please stay tuned. I'll put a link to this repository below just so you have access and look forward to seeing what you guys do. Definitely exciting times with such an affordable little drone. The fact that it has an SDK, we can control it as well as get video from it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.